I am going to introduce you to a new concept. I am going to call this the random stick because random wires, they're so last week. You don't actually need a wire to do a random wire antenna. Let me show you. This is really quick. You take a squid pole that you buy from AliExpress or find your favorite ham radio YouTubers like the ham radio dude that sells one. And I'd recommend that you support his channel. His extension poles are a lot more robust than the ones that I'm currently using. You can use the AliExpress links down below or I recommend you go over and check out the ham radio dudes poles. Now that you have one of these poles, we're going to pull it apart into its individual sections and we're literally just going to tape on some Faraday tape along the edge on the outside. Don't worry about folding it over to the inside. Further along in the video, you'll understand why you just got to keep watching and links to where you can buy the poles, the tape and all that kind of stuff is going to be down below in the description. There's a reason for this and it was kind of a weird discovery on my part is that yes, you can do the fold over, but then the friction fit becomes a bit arduous and a bit of a pain. These elements capacitively couple. You've got a piece of tape, piece of carbon fiber and another piece of tape and effectively they make a capacitive couple. When you slide these two pieces apart, you're going to have about a one inch overlap that you can take the pieces and you can rotate them. And that changes the capacitance of each section. I haven't done this yet, but I will in a future video is start testing how I can tune this antenna for different bands and make it multi-band antenna. Who knows, maybe this isn't going to be a random stick. Maybe this will be an antenna that can be tuned to all the bands and not be random at all. First thing that I am going to encounter in the comments is how Carbon fiber is bad. It's evil. It's not. There is some videos out there showing you that the loss of carbon fiber or a carbon fiber pole is about 0.1 dB. Richard Newstead covers this on his YouTube channel and you can see links below. Here will be a couple little snippets to give you an idea of the kind of experimentation that he's done. And I recommend you watch the videos. It's exceptionally thorough and will pretty much prove without a shadow of a doubt that carbon fiber is nowhere near the enemy that some people think it is. To give a closer simulation to a vertical, I developed a special test jig with an input and output winding that would enable me to insert the carbon fiber rod into the test jig and measure the associated loss using a spectrum analyzer. The difference in loss between having the rod in the test jig and not having the rod in the test jig enabled me to give that measurement, which was less than 0.1 of a dB. I know some of you aren't gonna believe this and gonna tell me that I'm completely full of beans, but let's just move on. Let's assume that you can use a fiberglass pole if that is what you want to use. The next thing that we need to do is make it so that we can attach it to something. Now, I have the tape actually come to the very end of the pole and at the end of the pole, there's a little metal cap. So all of this is conductively touching. I'm gonna take the end cap and I'm gonna drill it out, then tap it. This will allow me to put an M10 bolt through it, and this will attach to some of the other equipment that I have that will hook up to a SO239. I'm gonna be doing some 3D print attachments to the poles to give you that SO239 connection, but this is really easy and it goes really well with the ground screw that I put in last week. And you can see that video down below on how to make a very strong pull out anchor in your backyard. Now we're just going to screw this onto the SO239 connection and you'll also notice that I have the counterpoise is my fence. And no, my fence is not being the radiating element in this case. I've done a lot of testing with just wires themselves. And I've also made a Faraday cloth sheet and both of those work equally as well as the fence. And since the fence is already there, I'm going to use it as the counterpoise. The one that's in the backyard currently is about 33 feet long. It is a very long uh, 13 meter wood pole. Let's take a quick look at an SWR sweep. And you can see that it's not really all that resonant along pretty much all the bands, which means that you can actually tune it between 40 and 10. The other day I was on YouTube and I saw that Ham Jazz Simon was doing a live stream and I figured, let me see if I can break into the pileup. And shit, this pile was the result. Said, Victor Echo 6 in there. Go ahead. Victor Echo 6. I see a Foxtrot X-ray Simon. It's great to meet you. Hey, how you doing, buddy? 
I'm doing really well. Granted, it is not that far away. We're about 700 miles away. It's still not bad, and the auto quality is pretty good, given that I was pushing out about 60 watts on this transmission. I was too excited over this, and I did not record it. This here is the hop that I got on this antenna. We went from Calgary, Alberta to Italy. Um, crazy. So I'll put down in the text what the distance is, but okay, 90 watts on a 991A into my random stick on 10 meters. This is only an intro into the basics of this antenna. I do plan on doing a whole lot more experimenting on it. We need to establish what the capacitive coupled sections actually do when you rotate them. Can I get it so that it's tuned along certain bands and have, you know, faked capacity hats all the way along the antenna? When I start collapsing it, does it still work? Spoiler alert, when you drop one section into the other, it still works. It's really kind of weird. In the comments down below, let me know what you would do if you had one of these. What sort of antennas are you thinking are possible with this? We can do delta loops where you just have the box. Maybe we can do a stand-up Moxon. There are so many different ideas. Right now in my backyard, I've got one that's 33 feet long and I'd be willing to bet that I could get something close to 40 to 50 feet. I don't think there's an adjustable whip out there that's anywhere close to that length. I am going to be looking at manufacturing this as a product. And part of that will involve, instead of just having tape on the outside of a pole, is to actually have it epoxy down as an integral part of the pole might even try multiple element to see how they would work. If any of this interests you, there will be a sign up for an email list down below. And again, this is only the intro to what I'm about to do with these antennas. I'm terribly excited and I'm hoping that you will join me on the journey. This is Victor Echo 6 here Foxtrot X-Ray and I'm clearing this frequency.